You're watching K9 Action News with Daytime Emmy Award nominee Mark Thompson. Our lead story tonight involves the legendary, if not infamous, New Mexico bar band known as the Sads and the mysterious disappearance of their former lead singer, J.D. Rock. Our Kevin Covalier caught up with the band in a Los Angeles rehearsal studio where he spent almost an entire afternoon trying to unravel the history, chemistry, and mystery behind the sad-ass desert dogs. Tell me a little bit about uh, Mr. Rock, Mr. J.D. Rock. I know that you were affiliated with him for some time. J.D. Rock, yes. Uh, funny thing about him, he, uh, you know, nobody liked him. The man, his, his own mama said he was a waste of skin. He, uh, his dad used to say, I can still hear him to this day, go someplace and try to matter. I think I saw him, I think it was in S Franklin, Tennessee was the last time I saw him. He was actually at a pawn shop, he was selling his accordion. Um, I was considering him a gentleman because he had the ability to play an accordion and he didn't. I first met him at a crafts fair that I did at Taos Middle School and um, I make rock and roll snow domes so that's my side business. I've been doing that for a long time. So I sold 250 of them to Taos Middle School and we had an exhibit there and he came. He came to the exhibit and he was very, very nice to me, very, very handsome man. I didn't hate JD. I loved him. He was like a brother to me. Where is he? I'm glad you asked me that because the first and last time I saw JD Rock was his picture on that bass drum. That's the only time I've ever seen the man because Sage hired me when he heard me singing in New Orleans. So, you know, I heard about him. Now, now I did hear a story that, uh, you know, he was like, you know, shit faced somewhere in Plaquemines Parish and wandered off into the swamp. And I think I, think, yeah, I heard he was raised by a, a family of Nutria, something like that. Nobody liked him. The man had the personality of a small soap dish. He was a drunk. And, and you, know, you know what? The man stunk. The man smelled. He did not bathe. He didn't stop bathing. He didn't taper off. He just stopped. He, he wasn't well liked at all. I have a, uh, a hot dog lady says she saw you and J.D. Rock under a viaduct in Gary, Indiana together. And I want answers. Listen, that was the woman who owns Pink's in Los Angeles. She was vacationing in Gary. Apparently she has relatives there. JD and I were driving. We were driving from Strongsville, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland, heading to Gary to do a very big benefit show. Flat tire, it was pouring rain. We're gonna wind up underneath a viaduct. Are you gonna change a flat in the pouring rain without some type of coverage, man-made or otherwise? I think not. 
Well, he liked to be tied up. That was his thing. Hang himself, masturbation, you know. Everybody knew about that. He used to love to tell ghost stories. He loved telling ghost stories. You know, and we'd have tea and crumpets, and he used to tell me ghost stories a lot. <laughs> and did you play under the sheets like ghosts? Well, he, a little bit, you know. He used to run around the house like a ghost and scare me when I was taking a shower and things like that. I liked him. Well, I liked him. Did you ever lend him a bar of soap or anything or suggest to him perhaps that he I, I, I liked him so much that I stopped hanging out with him as a way of letting him know. I mean, it was tough love. It was the only way to deal with a thing like that, really, is you just got to stop enabling. And I figured that the longer I stay around him, the more he's going to stink. And so I just said, you know, it, it ends here. Casper. Casper, you know, he... Uh, was he friendly, always? He was always friendly, you know. He, he called me Casper for a while, but then, you know, I used to make him laugh a lot, so that's how he came up with the name Sparky. My real name is Julius Oscar de la Esteban Cornelius Montana, but he started calling me Sparky. Tell me what was Italy like I could fix your breakfast, baby Maybe later we could go for a hike Now I'm in a situation Where she wants a new relationship Hey, I I ain't that I saw him leave with a handgun and a really depressed look on his face, so I really don't think any of us did anything to this guy. I really think he took himself out. Um, but if he didn't, I'd love to have killed him, because, uh, you know, because everybody wanted to kill him. He was, a, he, was a, he was a douchebag. Well, he was a drunk, too. He was a tongue-chewing, knee-walking drunk. But uh, a gifted, gifted douchebag, like an embroidered douchebag. We, we actually have a receipt at a pawn shop for a Glock 9mm, made not too long after J.D. Rock entered the band. It's a shame. What what what, what kind of receipt? A, a receipt of purchase? With a thumbprint, uh, it's actually got uh, your, your thumbprint in its key. You're seen on camera with a Glock. And the will to use it, it looks like. Frothing at the mouth. Uh, what do you know about a Glock? From a pawn shop. I know you bought a clock from a pawn shop. I didn't know you bought a Glock as well. You said you're picking up a clock. For protection. You bought a clock for protection? No, I bought... Someone stealing your time? Wasting your... Killing time? You... Mm -hmm. You bought a Glock? You told me a clock. I bought a Glock and I needed a gun. I needed protection. What did you need protection from? People! What kind of people? Mean people! 